So looking at this picture of Angerstone, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it was taken in the early 1900s. Look at that beard, <laughs> that banjo, the woods. It's not a single iPhone in sight, except for maybe the one used to take this photo and post it onto Facebook. You see, Angus plays indie folk music, a genre that celebrates the rustic, lo-fi and vintage, and rejects anything that seems too modern or artificial. And yet, this genre exists right now in the 21st century, alongside Netflix and Pokemon Go. This contradiction is the crux of my research project. What happens when an identity that lives and breathes nostalgia collides with the modern world of social media? By analysing artefacts like music videos and lyrics, it's clear that indie folk loves conjuring ideas of uh, mountains, meadows, wild animals, and is very careful to sort of sweep under the rug any evidence of modern life. If we're to take this identity as authentic, does that mean that if a folk musician were to use an iPhone or post on Twitter or sign a record deal with Sony, that they'd be betraying their indie folk ideals? Are they expected to write music in a secluded log cabin in the woods using a typewriter by candlelight in the name of authenticity? Now, this notion of authenticity is a difficult one, and it's not a new one either. We've sort of seen it before with the outrage when Bob Dylan suddenly went electric in 65, when fans decried Nirvana for selling out to the mainstream in the 90s. My research brings this same sort of tension into the digital age, using a case study that's <laughs> especially poignant given how fundamentally incompatible it seems within this digital environment. By interviewing artists like Lior and Mama Kin, I've found that things aren't just black and white. There is no clear binary with folk authenticity on one side and commerce and mainstream on the other. To survive and compete in the modern music industry, artists have found it necessary to sort of step out of the log cabin, so to speak, and embrace new tools like social media. But with that comes complexities and gray areas. Some artists find that social media allows real human conversations, bypassing record companies to connect directly with fans, while others are more suspicious of it, seeing that it's impersonal, overly crafted. So at the core of my research project is this idea. As we hurtle towards an increasingly digital and interconnected future, a part of us seems to want to reach back and hold on to something simpler, more organic. I'm asking what this means and where it's leading to through the lens of music, 